Hi, I am Rachel Romeliotis. I am a senior editor with O'Reilly, and I am here with Damian Conway. He is an O'Reilly author and a prominent member of the Pearl community. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure, Rachel. So first I'd like to ask you about Pearl 5 uh, has sort of gone through an awakening recently uh, in the past five years uh, with releases of 5.10 uh, and 5.12. What is most significant with those updates? Well, I think probably the single most significant thing is that we're actually doing them. Mm -hmm. There was a long period where Pearl was just 5.8 and 5.8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Mm -hmm. And we went through, I don't know, six or seven years where we didn't have a major point upgrade. And now we're on a, a schedule where we are actually putting out a new major point upgrade every single year. Oh, wow. Um, it's not quite the Mozilla model of dumping everything, something every six weeks, but it does represent a really significant shift in momentum I was say. In, the, in the development process. And I think the other significant thing is that you're starting to see some of the ideas from the Perl 6 project filtering back into Perl 5. So you're seeing quite a lot of new features going into the language. And I know a lot of people are still just using Perl 5.8 because that's what it came with their system or sure. that's what they've been using for a long time. They've got a load of legacy code there. But uh, I just did a, a, a tutorial, for example, spent three hours, covered maybe one-fifth of all the new features that have come into Perl. Mm -hmm. So I think if people haven't looked at Perl for the last four or five years, they really need to take another look and see all the new features that have been brought into the language. Can you give an example that will make someone? Okay, so probably the biggest example is simply that the regular expression mechanism within Perl, which has always kind of been world standard mm -hmm. for those sorts of things, has had an enormous upgrade in that time. For a start, we introduced ideas from grammars so that you can start writing regular expressions that are vastly more complicated without writing vastly more complicated code. Nice. Uh, and there's, there's nice ways that you can decompose regular expressions down and then build them back up again mm -hmm. without getting yourself into trouble. And I think that that has perhaps been the most significant ch technical change mm -hmm. has been just the sheer power and performance and robustness and reliability of the regular expression engine. Interesting. What about another new thing that's come up is Moose. What are your thoughts on oh, that? Oh, yeah. Well, so it's hard to say whether Moose is really a technical uh, evolution or a social evolution mm -hmm. more. Uh, the whole idea has been that, that since Perl 5.0.0, Perl has had an object-oriented mechanism. And frankly, it was maybe the least impressive object-oriented mechanism of any major language. Mm -hmm. It just kind of got bolted on the side and it had a lot of good ideas in it. But it meant that whenever you wanted to do object orientation in Perl, you had to do a lot of work mm -hmm. just to make it work. And Moose is kind of the end point of a series of developments uh, over the last 10 years where we've tried to find better and better ways of doing object orientation in Perl. And I think one of the things that R Moose represents is a layer of object-oriented mechanism that almost no other languages have. I mean, you think of the other major object-oriented languages, C++ and Java and C Sharp and whatever you want to say, and you're pretty much stuck with whatever they decided was going to be their object-oriented model. Mm -hmm. But what Moose does is it adds what they call a meta-object protocol on top of the object-oriented system. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is that everything that the object-oriented system does is done by calling another object-oriented system that sits in the background. Mm -hmm. And with Moose, you can actually change what that does. You can say, okay, I don't want methods to be dispatched this way. I want to be dispatched another way. Mm -hmm. And you can actually change that. Wow. And so Moose has this kind of scalability that you don't see in practically anything else apart from maybe Smalltalk. Mm -hmm. And I like to say that, that with the advent of Moose and a couple of other modules that are like competitors for it, but really you know, colleagues, if you like, mm -hmm. that Perl went from having maybe the worst major language object-oriented system to having probably the second best, mm -hmm. if you consider Smalltalk to be a major language. Right. So I, I think the, the extraordinary thing about that is that it's been so widely adopted and so widely extended. If you go and look on CPAN, there are quite literally over 100 Moose modules wow. out there. And whatever you want to do with object orientation, even if it's stuff that would be considered very much out there and not at all mainstream, mm -hmm. there's probably a module in the Moose 
uh, ecosystem right. that is going to help you do that. So, so here to stay then. Oh, very definitely. And uh, I think next month uh, in Norway, the, some of the leading lights of the, the moose sub-community mm -hmm. are getting together and looking at how can we hack most of this stuff right back into the core of Pearl. Because Moose is just basically built out of Pearl. Sure. But for that reason, in some of the corner cases, it still has performance issues mm -hmm. because it's doing everything in interpreted language. Mm -hmm. So what the next step we hoped was going to be is can we take that meta object protocol and actually put it into the core, mm -hmm. you know, basically write it in C, right. so that all of the stuff that it's doing, it'll continue to do, but it can do it a lot faster. Good. So, yeah, it's here to stay and it's going to keep being big. Awesome. Um, another question I have is so that, you know, you're always giving a lot of good um, best practices. Are there, you know, two or three that you can give us here that will help, you know, all the Perl developers out there? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think there are. Um, the most obvious one, and curiously one that didn't get a lot of play in my book because it was a bit early in the piece, mm -hmm. was the fundamental importance of testing. Uh, the Perl community is a, is a testing culture. Mm -hmm. um, we originated a lot of the ways in which testing is, is done, mm -hmm. and the ones that we didn't originate, things like XUnit and, and RSpec and so forth, we stole and integrated into Perl. Right. And we have so much on CPAN that can help you test your software and produce better software in a test-driven development sort of sense. Mm -hmm. And I think the message that I've been trying to get around to a lot of people is it's now time to move to that kind of development process mm -hmm. to really start testing first, writing your tests and then writing the code to them. Right. And that's not a natural thing for most developers to want to do, especially most Perl developers, but it really does change things. So I think that's one of the really big ones. I think another one I would say is explore what regexes can do now. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're using Perl, you're using regular expressions for something. Right. But it, like I said, in the past five years, regular expressions have gotten vastly more powerful, a lot more usable, and a lot more efficient too. Mm -hmm. So just catching up on some of those things is going to make a really big difference to people. Interesting. So I, I think if, if I had to pick two, they're the two that I'd say start with. All right, good advice. A final question. What do you think, I know, you know there's Perl 5, there's Perl 6, lots of activity in the Perl community. What do you think is in the near future for Perl and its community? Wow. Um, there are so many things that I'm going to be wanting to say there. <laughs> I, I think that one of the things that we've seen over the last couple of years that's going to go forward into the future very strongly is a, a slightly different sense of organization about how we go about developing Perl and extending Perl and bringing new ideas into Perl. Mm -hmm. And I think both in the Perl 5 side and the Perl 6 side, because they're not kind of successor languages, they're parallel languages. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like C and C++ would be right. than, than you know, sure. sequential languages. Yep. And I think that what we've seen there is we've always in the Perl community been a lot about backwards compatibility and not breaking anything. So what we're trying to do now, and we're looking around at other languages that seem to do this a bit better, mm -hmm. Python being an example, mm -hmm. is we want to have ways where we can introduce more new features into the language without breaking everyone's history. Mm -hmm. And we think that we've pretty much got that worked out now. And mm -hmm. so I think what you're going to see is this continual acceleration of releases and development and new features going in in such a way that it isn't going to kill all of the old code. And there's sure. a huge amount of legacy code out there that we don't want to mess with. In the Perl 6 side of things, what we're seeing is we're finally getting to the point where we have an implementation of Perl 6 that's going to start to be worth using okay. in the next year or so. Um, because we've got pretty much the whole implementation done, and now it's just getting it optimized. Mm. Um, people going from five to six are simultaneously amazed at how much of it is actually implemented now, and secondly, amazed at how poorly it performs compared to Perl 5. Yeah. Because Perl 5's had, what, quarter of a century of sure. optimization? Give us a couple of years of optimization on Perl 6, and Perl 6 is going to be a serious, serious contender. Uh, and I think they're some of the main things. Uh, Community-wise, uh, Perl has... I think had a difficult time over the last few years mm. that for reasons that I don't fully understand, it kind of got the, the reputation of being a dead language or mm -hmm. an old language or a static language. You know, it's not moving or doing anything. Mm -hmm. 
I think that we're seeing a lot of new life and new energy, as you said, coming into the, the Pearl community. And I think one of the things we have to look at doing is, is how do we get that message out there? That mm-hmm. Pearl has a lot of new and interesting and important stuff in it that is worth people looking at. Uh, and how do we do that? So I think the, one of the big challenges for the community over the next couple of years is how do we explain to the wider world mm. that Pearl isn't dead, that it isn't superseded, and that being 25 years old isn't actually a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. That we got some things right and we're fixing the things that we didn't get right and we're still the fastest dynamic language on the planet. Right. Well, hopefully we did a little bit of that today. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. A pleasure. Thanks, Ray.